get ready with me for a singles event. My f- okay, so it was 90% women and host of you like women. If you like women, gorgeous Go women, there. gorgeous Go women. There. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're discussing a fascinating trend in the dating world. 90% of singles events are women. Why men will never go to singles events anymore? This video is for all the single men that live in Chicago, and we have almost 100 people RSVP, but we're looking for more male attendees. Last night, I did ski dating in Santa Monica, and I actually didn't get any guys' phone numbers at the end of the night. They ended up being more girls. Get ready with me for a singles event. My friend and I are going to, quite possibly, the craziest singles event I've ever heard of. But basically, you come with a friend, and you make a PowerPoint about your friend. It's like a four to six slide PowerPoint, pitching them to the other singles. I made a PowerPoint about my friend Naomi. She made a PowerPoint about me. So it covers like hobbies, interests, fun facts, and like funny stories and anecdotes. And then one at a time, you go up to the front of the bar and you give your PowerPoint presentation about your friend and you pitch them to the group. I saw the PowerPoint my friend Naomi made for me. It's actually hilarious. So if nothing else, it will be a laugh for both me and her. I will try to take some videos of me and Naomi presenting. Going to be a very interesting singles event. I've never even heard of anything like this, let alone done it, so we'll see. Okay, I'm on my way to one of the strangest singles events I've literally ever heard of. I'm getting in the car and I'm gonna go pick up my friend and then we'll tell you about it. So unfortunately my audio got butchered, but this is my friend Naomi and we're going to a singles event where you make a PowerPoint about your friend and then you present it to a bar full of singles. So we are each presenting each other. Okay, we're off to a horrible start. Zero out of 10. <laughs> we were looking for parking and we saw these two really cute guys and they were communicating with us about a parking spot mm -hmm. and they were like no no these people aren't leaving and so we pulled up to them we rolled down our window and we were like are you single and, and one of them said no we're not and the other one said yes we are and then they essentially kissed yeah they're married to each <laughs> other um is the conclusion of that story okay if nothing else outside the event really good little sunset situation okay we're doing deep calming breathing <laughs> So we got to the event, they had a little singles bingo to help break the ice for some conversation starters. There's my friend Naomi. And then here's me doing Naomi's presentation to the bar. I, of course, have to talk about her dog. And here is Naomi presenting me to the bar. So we both made PowerPoints about each other. And then after you do your PowerPoint about your friend, there's a little Q&A. So some people asked me some questions. I answered them. Some people asked Naomi some questions after I talked about her, she answered them. All in all, very painless. I would say it was a fun event. We did not find any romantic connections, but it's super fun to be able to just present your friend and talk about them. Plus we caught this really beautiful sunset at the end of the event. So all in all, good day. Let's break this down for a second. When she's attending these singles events, does she even consider what makes her a good wife? I mean. We hear a lot about what women want in a partner, but how often do they take a step back and think about what they're bringing to the table? Is she including in her PowerPoint presentation what qualities make her a good wife? Not just a partner, but a true wife? Because let's face it, being a partner is one thing, but being a wife requires commitment, nurturing, and a willingness to build a life together. Now, she claims that she can't find any romantic connections because the real men she's looking for aren't at these events. But here's the thing. If she's only focused on her desires without reflecting on her own contributions to a relationship, how is she expecting to attract that kind of man? Real men are looking for partners who are equally invested in the relationship. It's not just about what she wants. It's also about what she's willing to offer in return. If she's overlooking the importance of being a supportive, loving partner who's ready to step into the role of a wife, then she might be missing the whole point. It's easy to blame the dating scene or the men around her, but sometimes the real issue lies in her own mindset. If she's only fixated on finding the perfect guy without doing the work on herself, she's going to keep running into dead ends. So, before she points fingers and wonders why she's not making those meaningful connections, it's time for her to reflect. What does she really bring to a relationship? Are her expectations realistic? The journey to finding a lasting partnership starts with self-awareness and understanding the qualities she needs to develop. If she wants a real man, she might want to become a real woman first. 
Hello, fellow Swallow Girls. So you want to get invited to a singles event in New York City? Well, I'm hosting, so don't worry. Everybody's invited. Make sure you're checking out on Instagram, and I will have more information there. We will be having a Halloween bash next. Make sure you're following. Bye, love. The guys have made it in, and they got to just pick wherever they wanted to sit and who they wanted to start dating, and um, I'm alone. So many girls. Well, I know we're all like, So the guys paid to be here. <laughs> that's what's weird. And there's a lot more girls than guys. So that's weird. And it's not a situation of like where you date everyone and you just say yes or no or something. And at the end, if you both said yes to each other, you hang out later. You ask to match right away. And you like give the person like your QR code. And then you just like basically ask to match with them. Like the girl, they, they were saying like, ladies, you should initiate like, guys love when you initiate i'm sorry what um and once you match with someone you go next door and there's like an open bar and you all hang out so they're like we're really encouraging you to match and i'm like well i'll match for an open bar but i'm not gonna match like i don't know it just like doesn't really make any fucking sense but there's so many girls here everyone's so pretty but the vibes are a little weird Okay, I went on a speed dating event, so let me tell you everything I thought about it. The good, the bad, the ugly, the story time. Just explain if you're interested. Um, again, the things that I liked, maybe didn't like, and just, like, my opinion on it. Um, so, I found out about it. A lot of people were asking about that. I found out about it through one of you guys DMing it to me on Instagram, like, someone that follows me. She was like, hey... I don't live in your city, but I know that you live here and I saw someone post about it. So I thought you might be interested. I'm always like down to do random crazy shit. I embrace dating. I think it's super fun. I love meeting people, even if it's not romantic. Like, I just think we can all use more of like in-person types of interactions, social encounters, whatever. I think it's great. I've always seen speed dating like on TV and movies. So I was like, it's something I think I would like doing. because I like talking to people. So that's why I did that. Um, and I got a friend to go with me. I would have gone by myself, but I wanted to go with a friend. So that worked out perfectly. This event specifically, this was their second time hosting it. So it's brand new. It's a, it's a group that has a podcast that's like relationship focused. So they're the ones hosting the event. So what I saw when you sign up was that the women could just sign up and there would be 40 slots. So you just sign up as a woman with your name, age, email, Instagram handle, and like maybe some other things. But then the guy side of it, I didn't obviously like click and look at it really, but it did say like guy application. So the guys were more so having to apply, whereas the girls were just able to sign up. Originally, it was shown that basically you'd get there around 6, 6 to 6.30, you'd be signing in. We had like champagne, that whole vibe. And they kept the guys and the girls like separate. Then um, when it became like 6.30, we were supposed to date 20 guys um, at a time for like three minutes each and then have like a little break in between and then date the other 20 guys and then end it all and all get together, have a drink, take a picture, like whatever. That was how it was marketed. But what ended up happening was there ended up being a lot more girls sign up than guys. Not only that, probably ratio just off the bat, but a lot of the guys that maybe initially had signed up didn't end up showing up because of, they were saying outside factors like the Kentucky Derby, Cinco de Mayo. It was a very busy weekend this weekend. So there ended up being a very large surplus of women that they were not expecting to have. So that was the first issue that I will say that this event had was there was only like 30 tables, I think, set up where each girl was sitting and there was over 30 women. So a lot of the girls ended up literally having to sit in like this other spare room and just like watch all of us get to date. Um, and they didn't even get to like basically be a part of the speed dating event. And that was just that just came down to like whoever was there on time or in time to like get handed a seat number for your table. So a lot of the girls were like really upset and like really pissed about that, which fair enough. The other thing I would say was what I said before. I was it came to me as a complete shock when we were told that the men had paid good money to be here and like to be a part of this um and for me personally i don't think that anyone should have to pay i understand logistically they had free drinks there was a snack table people had to kind of like work the event so i and they had to rent the space like i do get the logistics of having money involved but i didn't know that going into it so then hearing that these men paid to be here that immediately kind of like not icked me out but i agree with like what some of the people were saying in the comments 
I just think either, you know, women and men should both have to pay to be there to equally date or not even, you're not paying. I don't think they should be paying like to date. You're paying, you're getting free drinks and food. So like, I'd be like, yeah, if each, each party had to pay $10 or something to like be a part of this, I would totally be okay with that. Or no one has to pay. Like there has, I don't know. I don't like the whole guys paying to be there. And I do understand a lot of people have different opinions about that. It, it could be similar to um, guys stereotypically paying for the first date. I typically on a first date will offer to go like 50-50 because it's clearly like an equal interaction. We both clearly are looking, we're here for the same thing. You didn't like offer to take me out. So that, yeah, that just kind of put a weird taste in my mouth knowing that these guys like paid and they kind of said like it was a lot of money. I don't know how much that is or what that means, but eh. The other thing that I found interesting that I wasn't necessarily expecting or didn't quite love about this um, was they were really pushing like um, you guys to match within like early on in the process. So for me, if I'm doing speed dating, I want to probably talk to and get to know everybody. If there's there weren't 40 guys, let's so say there were 40 guys, I could have enjoyed talking to number two for three minutes like how much could you really get to know in three minutes that you're like okay lock in i don't want to get to know anybody else here that's crazy in my opinion um and some people are like okay you're for the streets like if you have a good connection with someone you would just want to match right away okay why are we all here then because i want to like talk to everybody and what i've seen on tv before with speed dating is typically like you have maybe like a paper and you either are like interested and check yes on the person or maybe no. And then if you both at the end of the night said yes on each other, then you get each other's in information. Um, but they were like really pushing like getting matches and you basically would verbally just be like, hey, I want to match with you. And the other person may, might not want to. So then that puts you in a weird position. So I didn't love that. And they're also kind of like incentivizing it that like once you match, you get to go next door where the open bar was. Um, but they were also like passing out drinks the whole time and everyone ended up going to the open bar at the end anyway. So you might as well sit through it and get to know everyone. Again, my personal opinion and everyone's trying to come at me in the comments of this like she's still single. Like I wonder why everyone there left single except for one couple and they came in there hot and bothered and ready to meet, meet with someone they matched second round and that's fine love that for them i hope that they end up getting married but that wasn't the vibe of anyone there so um yeah the guys were nice conversations were fine with everyone um again i feel like i could talk basically to a rock or a brick wall i enjoy just talking to people but none of them were a match for me they were nice made some connections whatever but also to tell you like maybe a little bit about the guys i mean one of them texted me afterwards and asked me like what my Venmo was to like pay me. I don't know. I don't know why he asked me for my Venmo, but it just to me like that's not the type of connection I'm looking for. And by putting again the money aspect into it and I had this conversation with someone afterwards and we were kind of like we're going at it like not an argument, but the guy's point of view is so different than the girls because guys always want to make this argument that like all girls want is money. Got, you know, girls want da 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 like all this like money and are very superficial and just looking for like financial type things. And like I'm the type of person personally for me personally um I don't like I've never gone after the rich guy I've never had a like that's just like not what I look for I usually offer to at least split the bill like I'm very much about like equal I make good you know decent money I can afford all my own shit I've never like thought that that's a thing that I've wanted I mean it'd be nice to have but like I've never like prioritized that a lot of women do and that's to each their own but by having these guys pay to be there it to me you're automatically in a way going to attract women that are looking for those types of like suitors which isn't a bad thing and that's what they were kind of saying of like well we have these high quality men high quality men that paid a lot of money to be here i'm not i mean that's not how i like justify a good man based off his bank account or anything like that so to me that's not like that attractive of a quality or like thing that i want necessarily I would, yeah. Anyways. All right, let's dive into this. So, women don't have to pay to attend speed dating events, yet somehow, they're still complaining about the process. They say it's not equal when, in reality, men are out here paying for the chance to even participate. Let's break that down. Women are often positioned as the prize in these scenarios, something men are expected to invest time, effort, and, yes, money to win over. But instead of appreciation, you hear complaints about how it's still not quite right. Here's what's wild. Even with this setup where women get to attend for free, men still face a ton of rejection. They pay to be there, make an effort, and still get turned down left and right. It's like a product that men have to earn access to. Yet the system is somehow viewed as unfair from a woman's perspective. 
Let's talk about what this kind of scenario actually reflects. It's no secret that more men are just opting out. They're tired of being put in this one-sided setup. They're seeing that sometimes, no matter what they do, the standards only get higher and the returns don't measure up. And yeah, this trend is real. By 2030, studies predict that around 50% of women will be single, and a huge part of that is because guys are choosing not to play into this scenario anymore. can see unfortunately it was 90 percent women at this singles event look at all those chicks all those women walking around all of them dozens of them and barely no men men don't like attending these events ladies y'all have to stop going up to men y'all have to start approaching men look at all of them like like ants on a piece of bread let me tell you this tea on speed dating speed dating was um it was interesting. Welcome back to my series where I either fall in love or get my heart broken, but either way I learn a lot. Would I do speed dating again? Hmm, probably not. The kind of people who go to speed dating events, like especially on the guy side, I think it's generally guys who don't have much success on apps, old girls don't respond, or I've been stood up, or X, Y, Z. I would say in general, the guys there weren't really my type, but I also wouldn't say I really have a type but i know when i know it yeah, so i just don't think the kind of guy that i'm looking for might be at a speed dating event I really don't want to be rude to the people who put themselves out there and go to those events because i do think it takes a lot of bravery and i think it could be a really great way for certain people to meet their partner for me personally i like to know that my like person I'm pursuing has options and that like they're choosing me they're actively choosing me they can have anybody in the world but they pick me not someone where it's like they settled with you because you were there like and there's nothing wrong with that like if that's for you that's for you but, you know to each her own would I recommend it to people I would recommend it to people like all things considered like I don't regret doing it because one it was a fun way to spend the evening I love just talking to people it felt like being on a dating app but in person you let me know would you ever try speed dating Let's break this down. She's out here at speed dating events, knowing full well that the type of man she's really interested in probably isn't showing up to these things. Yet, instead of adjusting her approach or trying a new avenue, she keeps going back and then complains when it doesn't work out. She wants a high caliber guy, but here's the reality. Most of those men aren't typically spending their evenings at speed dating events. They're either busy building something meaningful, already in committed relationships, or simply aren't interested in these kinds of settings. But instead of reassessing her approach, she keeps going through the motions, expecting different results. Let's get real here. If you're continuously searching for a specific kind of partner in a place where they're unlikely to be, maybe it's time to look in a different direction. Complaining about it after each event only shows that she's not learning from the experience. If you're seeking a genuine connection with a certain type of person, then the best approach would be to go where that type of person might actually be, right? Okay, I just got home from my date with Finance Fan. I will say I feel like it was better with conversation in person. One thing that kind of concerned me, he said that he's like not a big hiker. He hasn't camped since he was like 13. And if you know anything about me, I am a huge outdoor girly. So I just, I asked like, how are you with hiking? And he was like, I'm, I don't know. I don't like wake up excited to hike. I wouldn't say that there was like crazy chemistry. I had to wait a little bit to post this update because I had an issue with my son. He broke his foot. So I was dealing with that. I've had a little bit of extra time to think about it and I'm just like not that into it. A big non-negotiable was the outdoor thing. When I asked him why he doesn't like camping, he said the last time he went camping, he was 13 and it was freezing cold when his parents took it. He hasn't wanted to go since because it was like traumatic. I just... It gave me the ick. I don't want to feel like I have more guts than the guy I'm dating. I'm really passionate about hiking, camping, and that's just something I love to do on my free time. And I don't want to feel like that's a burden to someone that I'm with. I also feel like it's a bigger reflection of how someone views the world. The other thing is he also didn't even text me when I got home to make sure I made it home safe. I'm just looking for a gentleman and to me that's like not 
gentleman like i also felt like there was something in his energy that just lacked passion or like excitement and i'm just that's just not who i am it's gonna be a no for me here's the thing watching this video gave me the ick she's here saying that a guy not enjoying camping is somehow a deal breaker really girl it's fine if you two just don't share all the same hobbies but calling it a ick because he's not into camping that's a stretch why not just say your interests don't align and keep it moving? The way she's framing it comes off as immature, like it's a flaw in his character rather than just a preference. This mindset that everything has to be about her interests, it's a red flag. Relationships aren't about finding someone who's a carbon copy of you. They're about getting to know the other person, asking about his hobbies, seeing what makes him tick. The whole point is to meet in the middle. If a small difference in interests makes her feel judgmental or condescending, then maybe it's time for some self-reflection rather than criticizing the other person. In the end, this ick she's feeling might actually be her own hang-up. The vibe she's giving off here is all about judgment. Take that as you will, but it's definitely a reminder that relationships are about seeing the good in people, not just picking apart small things that don't match up. From living and dating in New York City the last four months, the problem I realized is not that you're unable to meet people, it's that nobody wants to commit, not even to a second date. Everyone just wants to go on their little harmless coffee dates, their little casual walks in the park, and people just get their icks, like random ass icks on the first date and then never contact each other. So honestly, it makes sense why this is the number one worst city to date in the United States. That is why I am, your textbook definition of a lover girl hopeless romantic, designed an event for the people of New York City. If you are a single New Yorker, always complaining about how hard it is to get a second date, if you are in between the ages of 23, 35, and you're free November 6th, and November 13th, crafted an event called Based on a Second Chance that is going to guarantee 20 second dates in the month of November. In the span of one week, you'll go from zero second dates to a 20 person roster. Worst case scenario, you get to enjoy tapas and drinks on a cheeky Wednesday night in New York City. The best case scenario, you find a man that you like or a lady that you like. You get to talk about them when you go home for the holidays. If this sounds interesting to you, the signups are now live in the link in my bio. I'm only accepting 20 girls, 20 guys. Unfortunately, this is an event for straight people. Tickets are $150 for two dates. You get food, drinks, and a curated event with 20 singles in the room. No pressure, but if you want to come out, have a good time, possibly date, eat good food, this might be the event for you. Here's the thing. These events are designed to give the illusion of choice but they've unintentionally created a pretty ironic situation. Women show up at these mixers or speed dating events, and it's often 10 women to every one guy. And yet, the idea of choice has become so inflated that no one's actually choosing. Women have been told they've got endless options. So they keep holding out, thinking the perfect guy is just around the corner. But in reality, that line of better options keeps getting shorter. The illusion of choice has honestly set this whole generation back. Women keep passing up on good, solid guys right in front of them, all for the hope of someone better. Instead of appreciating the real connections they could be making, they're moving from one guy to the next, thinking, oh, I'll just find someone even better at the next event. But here's the wake-up call. It's not working. Women are overlooking great relationships for the idea of something more. But this more is usually just an illusion. So, women end up here where that sense of endless choice is ironically causing fewer real connections. The guys who actually show up, ready to meet someone, are left feeling like they're just part of a game. It's all about changing mindsets and seeing the person in front of you, rather than holding out for someone who doesn't even exist. The more women feed into this illusion, the further they drift from what they're actually looking for. Men freaking suck at speed dating. I went to this dating event the other night by a company called It's A Date, who are amazing by the way, when I did the date in a dash event and it was so bad, I was almost put off speed dating completely. But these guys are so lovely that run it and it was so well organized and I will definitely be doing more. But anyway, I was blown away by how some of the men behaved on the dates. Most of the guys were normal and nice, but a handful of them couldn't even act normal for five minutes. One of them sat down and the first thing he told me was that he'd gone to another speed dating event in the past and that it went so well, the girl came back to his and she stayed the night and he slept with her and they had breakfast the next morning. Why are you opening with this on a speed date? And there was another guy who could not stop speaking about his ex. He actually told at least three of us about his ex-girlfriend. 
again, you've got five minutes to get to know somebody and you're telling every single girl about your ex-girlfriend. You are not over her. Then there was another guy who, when I inquired as to why he's never had a girlfriend, he's always been single. He was like, oh, most women can't keep up with me intellectually. Their conversation doesn't stimulate me. As soon as he said that, I just shut down. I didn't want to know. Just came across as like super self-absorbed that you seem to think not a single woman in your life was as intelligent as you and could keep up with your sparkling conversation. Then there was another guy who told me that he was a twin. And then he started regaling me with the fact that one of the girls that he'd been on a date with, like a few tables before, she was also a twin. Oh, but her and her sister were born 30 minutes apart, blah, blah. And I was like, we've got five minutes and you're giving me the life story of the girl you spoke to three tables ago. There was one that had been telling me about his work and all his businesses. And when I was like, oh, what do you do when you're not working? He's like, I told you what I do for work. I'm like, yeah, I ask what you do when you're not working. It's like, no need to be quite so rude, buddy. Some of them are just like, I can see why you're single because you cannot even carry a normal conversation for five minutes. I did match with one guy from the event and he's messaged me, but he hasn't replied since. So I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but I did make a girlfriend from the event. The girl that I sat next to, really lovely guy that was putting on the event introduced us and we've become friends and we've been texting and we're going to go out again soon. And we're probably going to go to another It's a Date event because they do board game ones and bowling and shuffleboard and loads of fun stuff. So I'm definitely going to go to another one with her soon. Here's the thing. You'll see women go to these speed dating events with checklists that practically require a guy to be over six feet tall and pulling in over $100,000 a year. And when the room doesn't have exactly that, they end up disappointed and complaining about the lack of options. It's a bit ironic, right? They have all these requirements, but where are they actually looking for these mythical men? These events aren't designed to be elite matchmaker clubs, they're speed dating events. But instead of looking for meaningful qualities, Women come in with standards that, let's face it, rule out a huge portion of great guys who may not hit that six feet, $100,000 mark. It's like they're looking for the unicorn in a room full of real, decent people. And it's not about settling. It's about realizing that the qualities that make a good partner don't always come prepackaged with height and a six figure salary. So here's the reality check if you're looking for genuine connection, Maybe it's time to stop showing up with a mental measuring stick. Speed dating, after all, is meant to be a place to meet real people, not a filtering event for high-end dating criteria. By narrowing the focus to this kind of checklist, they're only limiting their own chances of finding someone who might genuinely make them happy.